All right, we're back with the 2005 Polaris Sportsman 500. Um, last video, we picked this thing up for $1,000, and uh, we ripped out the front differential. These CV axles were like really wiggly in there, and then we tore apart the top end because it was smoking horribly. So we got all brand new parts in here. We got two brand new CV axles. We got a brand new Weisskill piston for the top end. We got a gasket kit, and then we've got a rebuild for the front diff with seals and everything. So we should be good. We're going to begin with the front diff. If you remember, the bearings were just horrible. You can hear them really loud and really rusty and horrible. And the shaft was all worn out. That was really, really worn out. So we're gonna replace all this today. Get the front diff replaced, rebuild the whole thing, and hopefully take this thing for the first ride. And hopefully some snow comes so we can use the plow. So we got this clip out, front diff. You can listen to how bad the bearings are. Just horrible. What I think happened was water got through the seal right here and then damage this whole area. And um, it's kind of what I'm thinking. But there's also zero fluid in this thing. So we maybe had a leak somewhere. Now we've got that clip out. You can see there's like a copper ring that goes over the uh, four by four little clip right here. So that goes like that. And this thing should just punch right out of here. See if we can pound that out with a hammer. Like that. Yeah, that's pretty bad. See the whole thing's rusty. So that's no good. Then we'll get this seal out right away and then clean all this up. So the seal, you can just pound right out. There's the old seal. Before we clean that up, let's do the other side here. Get this all cleaned up. All right, so here's the other side. This whole thing comes out. I can get it. It's a little rusty. all comes out. It's right here. You can see how bad that one is. See how much rust is on that. So that's no good. Punch out the seal. Alright, so all these bearings come out of this cage right here. What you can do is you just pop them right back in like that and they don't like stay in, they don't click in or anything. So you just put them in like that and you push it in there and uh, that's how that works. So we're just going to clean all these up, Put a little penetrating oil on here. Clean this cage up a little bit.
truss is in there. Just gonna clean that out quick. Just gunked full. Got all the new bearings here. All the rust on here. All right, we got all the parts cleaned up. Everything's good, ready to go. Clean this off in the sink with some Dawn soap. Cleaned up pretty good. So now what we can do is reinstall this into here. So we're just gonna push these bearings. We're just gonna push these bearings in like this, all the way around. Make sure they're all in. With the top ones, same thing. All right, brand new bearings here. So this is going to go in like this. Oh yeah, that's nice. We're gonna put a little bit of assembly lube on there. These are all cleaned up. Looking good. Goes on like that. Got the brass ring. Over that, and then we've got our clip here. There we go. All right, we got the little bearing on top of there, and this little thing goes right there, like that. So this one is done. We got the new bearing here. Just gonna drop that in. We have to pound it in, just like the other one. A little bit of uh, assembly lube on that bearing here. The other side.
drop this in. And uh, these gears float in here. So once you have oil, it'll sound a lot better. Get these little pins right here for the four x four. These have to line up with the little grooves right here. So it's a little tricky. Let's see if we can do it. Let's just pull this up a little bit here. Like that. Make it a little easier. There we go. Alright, perfect. Get your bolts in here. All right, let's get these seals installed. We've got brand new seals here. Let's first heat this up a little bit. Grease these up a little bit. This one in. <sighs> All right, perfect. Oh, that thing is on there. Hands in diff lube here. Put that in. Good. 
All right, all the fluids in there. Pretty smooth. All right, differential is all fixed. All right, now that we got the front diff figured out, it's all rebuilt. We'll put that back in once we rebuild the top end. So let's get working on that. We got a brand new Wiseco piston for it. Right there. Here is the cylinder. So this is a Nicocel coated cylinder. So you can't use a hone on it. We're gonna be using some um, Scotch-Brite pad. Just scratching up the surface of it just a little bit. And uh, that should take care of the honing process. Um, yeah, let's check out the ring gap here quick, just to make sure everything is good to go before we start the installation process. All right, this piston was almost $200 for this thing. Here are the rings. You can see there's a little end right there that's going to face up on the piston. And then same with this one. You can see there's an end right there. It's going to face up. So let's just measure the ring gap here quick. Make sure we bought the right piston for it. That ring gap looks a lot better. A little bit bigger than 14, I'm guessing it's 17 thousandths. Eighteen. Yep. So we are at 18 thousandths for the ring gap. That is the second ring. Typically those are a little bit bigger than the first ring. Let's just see. It's a little tighter. It's probably 14. Yep. So that one's 14 thousandths for that ring gap. So we are right within spec there. That all looks good. So we can get these piston rings installed and then we'll start cleaning up the cylinder. All right, piston rings are on. Arrow points towards the exhaust side. We've got the ends right there facing up on the rings and you want to rotate the rings so that the top and the bottom ring are 180 degrees apart. You want to make sure the oil ring gaps right here are apart as well otherwise oil can seep through the ring gaps if they're all lined up so you want those staggered. Um, and yeah that's basically it. We got one clip in there already that's already prepped. Now we can install that. Uh Spray this down with a little brake cleaner. A little WD-40. Just kind of rough up the surface here.
All right, that should be good. All right, we're gonna get some gasket material on the surface here, and then get our gasket on. We like to use the Ultra Black Permatex here. It's gonna go around the whole thing, just for extra reassurance. We don't want that base gasket leaking. this up a little bit Alright, let's get the cylinder on. Head gasket going on. All right, we're going to be replacing valve seals on the valves here. So, time to Get these out. Things popped out. The valve looks really clean. These look brand new. Yeah, it's got a lot of oil on it, a lot of carbon buildup. So I'm really thinking the valve seals were leaking. Look how much oil is on that valve.
Look how much oil was on that. Just caked with oil. So yeah, I'm suspecting more and more that the valve seals were out on this thing. So the valve seals were pretty worn out. You can see there's a lot of play in there. Alright, we're going to clean these valves up with a wire wheel. You can see the before. Lots of carbon on there. Alright, this is the after. Got rid of all the carbon on there. So that looks a lot better. Alright, let's install the new valve seals. So these are the new ones right here. I like to oil them up a little bit. Push those on. All right, valves are all back in, looking good. All right, cylinder bolts are torqued to 46 foot pounds. All right, we got the head on, and we're torquing down these bolts. The procedure is as follows. It's 22 foot-pounds, you crank them to first, then you crank them to 51 foot-pounds. Then you loosen every bolt evenly 180 degrees, and then loosen them again another 180 degrees. Then you torque all the bolts to 11 foot-pounds, and then from this point it says tighten every bolt evenly uh, 90 degrees one quarter of a turn. Finally tighten another 90 degrees, one quarter of a turn. All right, now the bolts are loose. Now we're gonna torque them back to 11 foot pounds. Now you can see it marked the bolts with a permanent marker. We're gonna turn them a quarter turn and then another quarter turn. And that will be good to go.
All right, we're doing the timing right now. So we got this thing to top dead center by using the pull rope here. And as you can see in here, it's very hard to see because it was all rusty in here. But uh, let's see if I can focus it so we can see. There's actually a T mark in there. You can kind of see the top of the T there. And that lines up with the groove in the case right there. See the little arrow coming down? So we're tapped at center. You can confirm by seeing the piston right down here. If you look down in the spark plug hole, there's the top of the piston. And then you're going to come up here and put the sprocket in so that the notch right here is pointing up and these two dots are pointing up like that. And the cam lobes on the cam right here are going to be pointing down. And you really can't mess it up because the little notch right here is going to be pointing up. So that's how that looks. You can see it's pretty even with the hole right here. Once we get the chain tensioner in there, it should be perfect. All right, valves are set to point 006 inches or six thousandths of an inch. Those are all perfect. We just adjusted those and then we got the plate on right here. So now we can get the valve cover on and uh, get everything else bolted up here. So the carburetor was cleaned by the previous owner, so we're not going to touch that. All right, we got basically everything back together for the engine part. Gas tank is on, hooked up. Everything's routed correctly, so we're getting closer. Let's get the air filter on. That looks pretty good. some oil going in here. This thing takes about two quarts. One quart, one more to go. Have to start this thing up. See if this thing runs. All right, front diff is officially in. All right, now we gotta route the cooling line. Look at this. Back over here.
All right, let's get these front axles put in. All right, we got niche CV axles here. Hopefully they're the right kind. Not in the washer. And I see on there. Just because these are notorious for sticking into the front diff on a on the Polaris's, so coat that nice and good on there. It's around here. Get that ring. Nice and coated. I'm gonna do a little bit in here too. Alright, now let's see if we can get this thing to pop in. Pop right in. Oh, and I see some here as well. All right, next side. Is in here. Little on here. Shoved in here.
All right, we got the axles back in, front differentials back in. Everything is pretty much done except for putting the plastics, the wrap, and everything else back on it. But before we do that, I want to add coolant to it. We can get this cap off right here. And then we're going to attempt to start this thing up before we put all the plastics back on. Brand new battery. Got this thing from Amazon. I think it was 45 or 50 bucks. So it wasn't too bad. These seem to work pretty well. They come pre charged already. All right, here we go, moment of truth. Everything's rebuilt, We've got fluid in it, oil in it, everything's good to go. So, will it fire up and will it still smoke? That is the question, hopefully not. <laughs> All right, she fired up. I was getting a little worried there. <laughs> We're gonna top off the coolant, top off the oil. This thing should be good to go. 
Not a single drop of anything leaking out of here, so that's a good sign. We'll let this run for a bit. Come back and check everything, make sure everything's good, and take it for the first ride. Boots are all topped off, let's see if she fires back up. smoke a little bit. Hoping it's just burning off all the old oil in the pipe, which it definitely could be. Been running for like five minutes now, still smoking. I think there's a bunch of oil in the pipe. Hopefully. Hopefully it's burning off all that carbon.
something blue. Coolant line blue or something all over my foot. Oh, I burned my foot bad. All right, so I was riding this thing probably for 30 minutes and all of a sudden, I think coolant hit my foot. I don't know where it was coming from, but it spurt everywhere. And it is just killing my foot. Where the heck did that come from? Oh, look at that. The bolt came loose right there. <laughs> well, that is unlucky. You can see the, the breather bolt must have been partially open. And uh, it must have backed out. So, yeah, you can see it just pulling out of there. So I shot out, hit my foot. But uh, at least it's not anything serious. So hopefully it's not stripped out completely. All right, we got the new bolt in there on the water pump with the crush washer. It's all fixed up. That uh, bolt must have been partially loose when I drained the coolant from the first time and must not have noticed it when I was rebuilding it. But yeah, good thing that was the only problem I thought for sure. Like a line broke or the head gasket blew or something, something serious, but just a simple fix. And now it's up and running again, working great. And the smoke's starting to go away. Um, I think it's just burning off the pipe carbon. So if you look at the pipe here, We'll rev it out a little bit. Smoke is completely gone. Just getting a little nervous there for a little bit. But uh, it was either the valve seals or the piston rings, and we replaced both, so we took care of it. No longer a smoky quad. Nice looking machine. I paid 1200 bucks for this thing, so pretty good deal. cleaned up. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video on this thing, rebuilding it, getting it uh, to stop smoking. It was definitely a process, but uh, it was definitely worth it in the end. So this one turned out pretty good. Thanks for watching guys, thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for the next video, and until next time, we are out.